six invitational playoffs day number two 16 teams entered the day and only eight emerged they were eliminated over the course of eight games and that's what we're going to be talking about today First game of the day, Oxygen versus Eminem. The community was on the side of Oxygen here, but not by a massive margin. About three-fifths of the voters went for Oxygen, and they ended up being correct. Uh, it's just the ultimate downfall of Eminem, I guess, having to play these 10 a.m. games. I believe that they only ever lost their 10 a.m. games, with this one being the final one and the final nail in the coffin for them as well. Eminem is the first team to go out of the tournament in the bracket stage. 7-4 on CAFE, 7-5 on Oregon, both for Oxygen, of course. We see Oxygen win the first two rounds, followed by an M&M round, another Oxygen, another M&M, and another Oxygen. 4-2 defensive half on CAFE for Oxygen, and then they pick up two rounds immediately on attack, putting them already onto map point, and then M&M gets a round, they get another round, but then Oxygen finally gets their seventh round to close out that map 7-4. And then we go on to Oregon, and Eminem starts out with a round win, but then Oxygen gets three round wins for themselves. One for Eminem, one for Oxygen. Oxygen is now up 4-2 to two after their attacking half. Same thing as on Cafe. They're up 4-2 at the beginning of the game, but that was after a defensive half. This is after an attacking half on Oregon, which is pretty solid. Eminem get a couple rounds of their own. They even up the scoreline 4-4. Four to four. Another round for Oxygen. Another round for Eminem, 5-5. Five to five. And then Oxygen gets two in a row to close that one out. 7-5 and eliminate Eminem from the tournament. So that is one of the European teams out of the lower bracket. And we have two more coming up. We have to see a, a Navi game and a in a rogue game. But first we'll see an all LATAM showdown. First let's look at the stats though. Right, it was Vertical that his that secured this 2-0 victory for his team, more so than anyone else, I suppose. Yaga did well, and so did Laxing, but it was Vertical on top, and he finally picked things up. He had been struggling in this tournament, and I did say in the previous video that if he wants his team to make a deeper run in this tournament, he is going to have to improve his performance, and, well, I, I guess that's exactly what he did, doing pretty well. And then on the side of Eminem, Tyrant standing out a little bit, and then Solotov, Neo, and Nello not performing especially well. And that'll be the end of the tournament for Eminem. I mean, they probably didn't have the highest hopes. They were definitely coming in as one of the most disadvantaged teams in the tournament, seeing as though they probably have some of the least top-level competitive experience of everyone. And, I mean, virtually no land experience. I think Nello has some amount. But, yeah, that's going to do it for Eminem, and Oxygen will advance through the loser's bracket. Let's move into the next game. Ninjas in Pajamas versus MIBR. 80% of voters thought that Ninjas in Pajamas would take this, myself along with them, and we all were incorrect, unfortunately. I went with Ninjas in Pajamas. I made that prediction before I actually saw the Ninjas in Pajamas versus TSM match, so I did, of course, my whole pr bracket prediction, and I had TSM beating these guys, but I thought that they would put up more of a fight, so if I had seen that match, I might have gone with MIBR. I might have changed my prediction or gone with a different prediction. But, well, too late now. Uh, I, I felt like MIBR was one of the teams that I was potentially underrating, and I was correct. The other teams I thought I might have underrated, I said in the video, were Eminem and Ninjas. And because Eminem just went out where they did, I guess I properly rated them. And because Ninjas go out here, I overrated them, and I did, in fact, underrate MIBR. So at least I had one of the three underratings correct. All right, so 7-3 and 8-6. So we start with a little bit of a blowout, and then it gets close on map 2, maybe teasing a little bit of a map 3, but we never actually get there. On Cafe, we see a couple of MIBR wins, and then we see three back from Ninjas, and finally one more for MIBR, 3-3 three, three, half. Two more get, go to MIBR, and then two more even after that. Four in a row on defense secures the map for them. 7-3 didn't even look that difficult. Ninjas in pajamas are just... Maybe not completely falling apart, but they just remain ever so inconsistent, and I just don't really understand why. All right, we go to Coastline, and MIBR gets the first three rounds. Finally, Ninjas gets one, but then MIBR get two more to close the first half 5-1. In MIBR's favor, Ninjas of Pajamas gets one, they get two, they get three, and then MIBR gets another one. They're up on map and match point at this point, and Ninjas need to get the next two rounds to go to overtime. They do exactly that. But then once we do get to overtime, MIBR just gets two rounds to secure the game without even going to the final and 15th round. So solid win by MIBR, and they look, I mean, about as good as I thought they could. Not, not that I exactly thought they would, but with the whole underrated thing, yeah, I thought they had potential to do this. They did go very deep into the last SI, and that's what I was basing a lot of it on. Okay, so 
Balls, Philippox, and Raps up here. A little bit of a dynamic trio. And then Lucid and Reduct a little ways behind that. And then for Ninjas, Kamikaze going even on kills. Psycho as well. Everyone else going kind of negative on kills. And then the ratings, not not all terrible, but uh, you know, just not as good as MIVRs. And they didn't play as well as MIVR did. So they're out of the tournament. That is the reigning world champions eliminated. They got first place last SI, then they got ninth through 12th in Mexico, and then they got second in Sweden, and now they're out of this tournament at 13th through 16th. So they are, I guess, the 16th, sixth team eliminated from the tournament, the four from group stage, and then Eminem, and now these guys. All right, let's go on to the next match. Navi versus Dark Zero. The community was pretty split on this one, almost right down the middle, just a little bit in favor of Navi. In the end, though, it was Dark Zero that took it. I did predict Dark Zero, so I guess I got this one right as well. And so that's going to be another European team eliminated. BDS went out in groups, and Eminem went out just earlier in that match that I covered. And now Navi is out, so this is going to leave just Rogue and Empire, and we'll see what the fate of Rogue is because they do have elimination game or two to play today right both these teams started off the group stage looking really bad navi getting destroyed by oxygen and dark zero getting uh destroyed maybe not as badly though but uh, beaten pretty badly by elevate so neither of them were looking especially good but they both improved over the course of the group stage and then navi had a banger of a match versus space station which sent them a uh, navi that is to the loser bracket and they were just of course around multiple opportunities of one round away from beating them as has been the case several times in this tournament for several different teams and uh so yeah it could go either way when i predicted this and uh of course i as i mentioned for one of the previous matches didn't have full information going into it but i stood by the dark zero prediction though i thought it'd be close and well the community thought it would be as well and then when i was watching it in that first map i thought wow navi's just gonna destroy these guys because they did destroy them on the first map 7-2 all right let's take a look dark zero navi dark zero navi 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 all right four defensive rounds on bank is solid and then we switch sides and then they get two more rounds and then even another round to just win 7-2 so they took what six rounds in a row yeah so after round three they just won three defenses and then three attacks and they won the whole map so uh, Navi looking pretty strong there. They definitely improved their bank play from that first game that they played against Auction where they got, I believe it was a 7-2. So going from 7-2 to 7-2-ing their opponent, pretty solid. And then we go over to Oregon and now we see a victory for Dark Zero. They take the first round and then Navi get two and then three for Dark Zero. Going up 4-2 on Oregon is probably at least where you want to be. Navi get a round, and then Dark Zero get two, going on to match point. Another round for Navi. They need to win the next two to go to overtime. They don't get either of them. Dark Zero wins the map in round 11 at a 7-4 scoreline. And finally, we go to Cafe, and things are just as, end just as dominantly for Dark Zero as they began for Navi. Dark Zero wins three rounds. Navi gets one, and then Dark Zero gets two more. Now, I mean, normally I'd be saying 4-2 half on cafe is where you want to be as a defender and now dark zero get five rounds on the attack things have been a little bit weird in this tournament attackers have finally hit their stride and seem to be uh, maybe not overpowering defenders i think it's split right around down the middle for attacker defender win rates at this point but some maps do go strangely in favor of attacker or defender contrary to what it would normally be and cafe is no different so maybe navi can match this 5 one half but well they don't even get close of course they only take one more round dark zero goes on a match point immediately navi stays alive for one round but then dark zero closes it out seven two so a pretty dominant win i mean they they lost pretty puzzlingly badly on bank considering how the rest of the maps the other two maps went but i mean a seven four and a seven two back is super solid dark zero continue to look better and better throughout this tournament and well we'll have to see where they go from here and looking at the stats, saves is the only saving grace for his team. Not enough to actually save his team, but, uh, you know, still he did well in terms of statistics. And then on Dark Zero, another pop-off for Hyper. And I say another, I don't actually know if he's had a really good game. He had that one map where he was doing really well, and I don't think he ended up doing well in the series. So this might be his first really good series. And then NJR, again, continues to do well. He's been, like, top one or two most, if not every match that they played. And then we see do, uh, Pam Zoo doing well and Eclipse and only canadian really suffering in the stats but as they're well i mean i want to say support player but he's just not right he's like flex player or something but you know as the igl sometimes your stats do suffer it is what it is they got the dub and pretty decisively at that let's move on to the next match 
Elevate versus Rogue. This ended up going down to the wire and Onigiri absolutely popped off, not in the series as a whole, but in the final map. He ended up tying the single map kill record, the all-time record. Palu set it at 27 kills back in, I think, 2019 at OGA Pit. And we see 27 kills getting dropped by Onigiri on Oregon here. They both did it over the course of 15 rounds. This was, of course, Oregon, and that was back on Cafe, I think. Palu did it against BDS. I think they were largely the same BDS squad, but uh, some number of different players and, well, they were a lot less experienced back then. I suppose also was Palu, but yeah, it was super impressive when he did it back then. It was at a minor, and this is at six invitational, so if it was up to me, this would be the definitive kill record, but people get all up in arms on the matter for some reason. I definitely, you know, this is more impressive. That was still between two big teams in Liquid and BDS, and this one is against two, maybe not even as big teams, I guess you'd say BDS and Liquid are two of the top, top names in Siege, but uh, Elevate and Rogue are still here playing in bracket at six invitational. And yeah, that and that's the important part. In bracket at six invitational versus at a minor. So I mean, believe what you will, but in my heart, this is the uh, is the world kill best of one or not best of one single map kill record. All right, it is enough to put elevate over the top in this match, but just barely. 68% of voters went with them, and they were correct. Seven three seven three eight seven. So technically not close first two maps, but we did see identical round counts. So a close series up through that point. And then only one round in the end separated Elevate from Rogue and eliminated Rogue from the tournament. All right, looking at Cafe, Elevate gets off to a good start. Three rounds in a row, one for Rogue, one for Elevate, one for Rogue, putting up Elevate putting Elevate up 4-2 after their attacking half on Cafe. That is solid. Another for Rogue, two more for Elevate. They are up on map point, and then they just secure it right there. No struggles to secure, to secure a map at 6-3 this time. All right, 7-3 win. Rogue takes... Clubhouse 7-3, Elevate start out with a round win though, Rogue get 2, 1 for Elevate, 1 for Rogue, 1 for Elevate, 3-3 three, three half, big Napew 1v3 clutch there in round 6, Rogue, 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 so you see 4 rounds in a row for them on defense, they close it out pretty easily just like Elevate did on Cafe. Going on to Oregon, you're going to see a lot of Onigiri uh, multi-kills in every round, I think he doesn't actually get any multi-kills in overtime though, so he got the bulk of his kills in regulation and well yeah regulation is still 80 percent of the rounds but um even in terms of the, the ratios and the relativity and whatever still got many more in in regulation so right rogue take the first round elevate rogue rogue elevate rogue four two up for for rogue and yeah so it's going to take onigiri really battling back to win it elevate takes a round rogue take two more now they are up six three can they close it out they cannot because three in a row for elevate including a 2k a 2k and a 3k by onigiri so here's that six three comeback once again three six comeback however you want to call it go to overtime elevate takes the first round rogue wins the next one and then the 15th round does go to elevate so i think right we don't yeah no onigiri multi kills in overtime so he did most of his work before overtime and the rest of his team closed out the victory once we went there i think this was technically a 1v1 clutch it's not recorded as such because there were still two players alive on i think it was elevate side but one of them was down so it was an effective 1v1 it was nerix against um i don't remember who actually it was maybe it was rips whoever, whoever it was uh but yeah came down absolutely to the wire very last round came down to one player left on each team and i suppose the one player on rogue might not have known i'm not sure if he was the one who downed that other player but he might have thought he was in a 1v2 and not a 1v1 i don't know but uh, in the end, yeah, it was Elevate that took it down. I might actually be mixing that up, too. Maybe it was a Rogue player that was down, but I think it was an Elevate player. Yeah, super impressive performance by Onigiri. And if we look at the stats here, yeah, he did what he needed to do. Only 13 kills in the first two maps and then 27 in the second one. And then going back to the kill record one more time. I think it was eight deaths for him in that last map and also eight deaths for Palu on that map. So identical kills and deaths, identical KPRs, all this stuff. So uh, really impressive on either end. The rest of the team, I mean, they weren't doing terribly, but yeah, it was Onigiri who had to really, really pull them over the line, who secured a lot of those rounds for them. And then uh, Crying does pretty well, and the rest of his team lagging behind a little bit. And well, if they lagged behind just a little bit less, maybe they could have secured it. If they could have shut down Onigiri in just one of those big rounds, things could have gone differently. But Heartbreaker for Rogue, and I suppose big Heartbreaker for... EU as well. We now see Rogue getting eliminated, Eminem getting eliminated, Navi getting eliminated, all of them out in 13th through 16th. BDS already went out in groups, leaving only Team Empire 
as the sole representative of Europe. And, well, that's a good one to still have in the tournament, but we'll see if they can actually get it done or not. All right, let's move on to the next match. Damwon Kia versus Oxygen. 2-1 in favor of Oxygen. So Damwon getting upset once again. A couple of North American teams cutting them down in their prime. And they fall at 9th through 12th place when everybody, including myself, had them going to uh, pretty far in the tournament, if not to the grand final. I had them, of course, placing second. But here they are getting eliminated so early. And yeah, I, I don't know what happened. Did they just get figured out? Did they just fall off? Did... Oxygen just boss up in the tournament. It, I, I don't know. They, these guys played each other in groups, which I think I, I forgot to mention in the previous video when I was talking about predicting this matchup. But yeah, so I, I don't know what went down. It did look like Oxygen were coming out strong the previous time that they played, and then they just fell off. They just faltered for whatever reason. And it almost looked like that was going to happen here again, but uh, it was not to be. Still, I, I'm surprised it wasn't even a little bit more in favor of Damwon, the community prediction, but still nearly 80% of the prediction is going to them. And uh, and part of the reason I do say that is because Oxygen did just play yesterday against FaZe and they got beaten pretty pretty decisively. But, I mean, here they are, not ready to exit the tournament just yet. We go 8-6 on Villa, and if I remember right, I think the, the previous game that they played might have also been on Villa, and it was also an 8-6, and then they played on whatever the second map one it was, and it was like a 7-3 for Damon. so Oxygen was doing pretty well, they didn't manage to take the map, but then they got uh, decked a little bit on the second one, losing the series perhaps prematurely, so let's check out how this one went. Damwon Kia takes the first round, Oxygen answers back, one for Damwon, one for Oxygen, one for Damwon, one for Oxygen, they're just going back and forth, this is a crazy round, vertical 4k, 1v3, disable. All of this stuff. All right, 3-3 three, three, half, and then Oxygen, Oxygen, take a little bit of a lead. Damwon closes that lead, 5-5, five to five. and then Oxygen, Damwon, we go to overtime. These teams are just neck and neck. We see a coded clutch here in round 13, and then they carry that momentum into the next round. Damwon closes it out, 8-6, and it's looking like it might be a little bit of a repeat from that group stage game. Damwon closes it out, 8-6, in a game that it seemed like maybe Oxygen had in the bag at one point. Going on to Coastline, Damwon gets off to an early lead, we get a couple of rounds, Oxygen answers back, two of their own, one for Damwon, one for Oxygen, another 3-3 three, three, half, two for Oxygen, one for Damwon, one for Oxygen, that puts them up on map point, and then Damwon gets one more, but they need the next one as well, if they want to go to overtime, they do not get it, Oxygen wins this one, 7-5, and then finally we go on to Clubhouse, and Oxygen just carry that momentum from the second map, and they run away with things on this one. Two for Oxygen, three, and then Damwon gets one, but two more for Oxygen, five, one, attacking half on the clubhouse for Oxygen, and it looks like it's their time. Are they going to get come back on? Are they going to choke as many teams have in this tournament? They are not. They just get the next round, putting them on to match point. Damwon Kia's tournament life on the line. They have to keep winning and not stop winning. Oxygen just shuts them down immediately after this. 7-2 scoreline, so... I mean, maybe Oxygen is making a bit of a resurgence in this tournament, and they certainly knocked out one of the tournament favorites. So, yeah, just this bracket's been crazy so far. I mean, just a lot a lot of ups and a lot of downs for a lot of teams. Most team having their ups and downs. I mean, Damwon, one of the last teams to have not had a down, and now the only one pretty much being Team Liquid if we're counting bracket and group stage. And then we will take a look at the stats as well. Woogie Man once again on top of his team, but not terribly impressive stats. Good entry scoreline though. And then we see it is Kino on top here. And Vertical did drop down a little bit from his performance from last map, but his team did pick up the last match, that is. But his team did pick up the slack. Yaga on the bottom, but not doing that badly. So just solid performance by Oxygen and and maybe even a great performance you'd say because uh, that seems like it was what was necessary to take down Damwon. Maybe they're just group stage fiends and they're just bracket chokers, whatever it is. They definitely did not live up to expectations considering they made it 5th through 8th place at Mexico and then they made it 3rd through 4th place and just barely lost there at, at Sweden and now here at the 6th Invitational going out at 9th through 12th place. Alright, let's go on to the next match. Space Station Gaming versus MIVR and my heart breaks. The community, along with myself, thought that uh, Space Station would take this one. But honestly, after seeing that MIVR versus NIP game, I was a little bit unsure. I was still rooting for them, hoping for them to win. And I thought they could do it. And uh, of course, they were so close. If you take a look at the maps here. 
but yeah, 82%, and so this is a little bit of a shocker. After I saw Villa, I was feeling pretty confident. I was thinking, all right, these guys are going to run away with it. I mean, they did on Villa at least. They finally broke their curse of the slow start, and they get off to a very decisive map one win. But then MIBR answers back with just as decisive of a chalet, and Space Station was just stumbling over themselves. So many questionable plays and rounds just cost them. They might have ended up losing this map anyways, but it just it was in a fashion that you don't really want to lose a map. Luckily for them, it was not the final map of the series, but then when we go on to bank, I mean, they choke it a bit. They go all 15 rounds, and they can't secure it, so let's look at Villa. Yeah, Space Station gets four in a row. It's looking so good for them. MIBR finally gets a round. Space Station gets one more 5-1 defensive half on Villa is solid. MIBR getting around here off the back of a clutch, and then Space Station just gets two more rounds, closes it out. Got to be on top of the world, feeling like, all right, we're moving on. But then they go on to Chalet. MIBR takes the round, MIBR takes another one, and another one even going up 3-0. Space Station get two back, and one more for MIBR, 4-2. Defensive half on Chalet, not really where you want to be as Space Station, pretty good for MIBR. But we have seen some heavily defended, heavily defender-sided Chalets in this tournament, so maybe this will be another one of them. And one of them even being a Space Station game, I believe, if I remember right. MIBR gets three more rounds after this point in the second half and making it four rounds in a row total and they just close it out with an easy 7-2 and we go on to bank. MIBR gets the first round, Space Station then get three in a row, two for MIBR, three, three, half. Maybe a little bit advantage to MIBR, but not insanely so. Space Station get another round. Now it's about even-ish. You expect to be at about a 4-3 scoreline if you're now on your uh, defensive half as Space Station, that is. And then MIBR ties it up. We go 4-4. Four, four. And then Space Station gets around. MIBR gets around. Space Station, MIBR. So they're just going back and forth. And one or two of these Space Station losses, MIBR wins, that is. Just, oh, man, I don't know. I think they should have won. At least, uh, which one was it? Maybe it was this Bell Epox. Oh, yeah, yeah. He This final kill, it's like zero seconds on the clock, and he hip fires somebody when he jumps through a rotate. Yeah, just... Uh, that was tough. That was a tough one to see, but it wasn't over yet. We see Space Station. They go up on to map and match point first, but yeah, MIBR does take this one. And then we go to overtime. MIBR finally get on to map and match point themselves off the back of another clutch. 1v1 by Falls. Space Station gets around and it is all on this and just Space Station gets picked apart. It's almost a flawless round for, for MIBR, if I remember right. Only like one death on their side, maybe two, but... Yeah, I hate to see him go out so early. They're the first North American team eliminated, which, I mean, is quite good for North America. All five of their teams made it to the top 12 of the tournament, and it is a bit surprising, though, that it is Space Station eliminated first, considering they've been one of the stronger contenders in NA internationally, for sure, throughout the year, and then even within the region, they were pretty dominant at different times in Stage 2 and 3 specifically, but they didn't actually end up winning the NAL Finals. So maybe going forward, it's going to be Sonics, the king, the absolute kings of NA. We'll see how they and the rest of the NA teams place by the end of this tournament. The stats falls on top for his team, and Hot and Cold and Fultz popping off relatively for Space Station. Skies, Bosco, Rampy, uh, not doing well enough to, I guess, secure the victory. And uh, they are, their stats don't even look especially bad compared to MIBRs, but I mean, seeing as Seeing how close the round count ended up being, only one more round at the end of the series going in favor of MIBR, these stats definitely make sense. And all right, let's move on to the next match. Furia versus Dark Zero, the rematch of the rematch. Of course, if you've been watching all these videos, I've already talked about it, but they did play at the previous X Invitational. They played in group stage, which Dark Zero won. It was just the best of one. They played in bracket. Furia eliminated Dark Zero 2-0. They just played in this group stage. Furia also beat Dark Zero once again. And now here they are to play in another six invitational bracket. Loser of this will get 9th through 12th, which is, I think, one round further than their match last time. I think Dark Zero ended up at 13th through 16th in the previous six invitational when these two played. But, right, it is Dark Zero finally. Third time lucky indeed. I may have predicted differently if I had seen Dark Zero's first match already, but I hadn't when I made the prediction. Uh, Furia I, is the team that I picked, but I didn't get to see Dark Zero against Na'Vi by the time I made the prediction, so I might have gone with Dark Zero, but I was sort of feeling the Furia 3-peat if I'm being honest, so 62% of people did agree they thought Furia would take it, 
And yeah, Dark Zero just keeps looking better and better. 7-3 and 7-2. One of the most decisive scorelines we've seen in the tournament. Uh, only allowing five rounds for Furia. So not the most the most decisive, not the biggest blowout, but indeed one of them. So going on to coastline, Dark Zero, two rounds by Furia. Dark Zero, Dark Zero, Dark Zero. 4-2 defensive half, solid on coastline. Another round for Dark Zero. One for Furia, two more for Dark Zero. They close it out pretty handily 7-3 scoreline going on to bank latam's been quite good on bank dark zero starts out and they get three rounds in a row furia finally gets one two more for dark zero you're up 5-1 bank generally attack recited so furia could potentially match this but getting five is uh, a pretty daunting task at times dark zero gets another round they're already up on match and series point furia need to win out to stay alive furia gets around but then dark zero just closes it out finally getting their revenge and you know potentially they could go deep in the tournament off the back of this momentum they've they've garnered for themselves and right we see everyone going negative in terms of rating on furia everyone going even or better on even or worse that is on kd and then we see njr once again on top for dark zero eclipse and pambazoo also popping off hyper doing pretty well and then canadian just shy of the 1.0 so uh, 17 and 8 is sort of a funny scoreline to look at in a best of three, but indeed, it, especially compared to how many deaths some of these other players have. But him and Pamazoo going really big in terms of the fragging, and then Eclipse pretty, pretty fraggy as well, I guess. 95% uh, cost on NJR is huge, and the uh, the one VXs and the plants I think is what's really bringing Eclipse's rating up to nearly the level of NJR's. Yeah, so they look quite good, and I mean, I'm hopeful for NA going forward, especially considering how many we have left after this uh, after this play day, after this day of playoffs. And let's continue through it, and I guess we'll talk about the uh, overarching themes and storylines at the very end. Let's not get too much into it here. Phase Clan versus Elevate, and indeed it was predicted for Phase to come out on top, but after Elevate's massive performance against Rogue, and I guess it was like super close, but maybe if onigiri could pop off like he did against rogue or if even some of his teammates could match his energy in that match then they could take down phase but no it was a 2-0 for phase the very end of this match the uh i don't know like 10th and 11th and 12th mostly the around the 11th round of cafe was absolutely plagued with rehosts there were like three or four of them and so this game got dragged way on all the players were just sitting there and very anticlimactic in that way because uh, at that point phase was one or two rounds. They were it was five to five, and then they had to rehost once or twice, and then they came back and phase one around. Then they they had to rehost at least one more time, and then phase just win one more round and end it. Uh, there were a lot of rounds to be played if Elevate could have won some rounds, but uh, no, uh, phase just closed it out. Pretty anticlimactically, 7-2 on bank, another decisive bank result. FaZe Clan gets four in a row, one for Elevate, one more for FaZe. 5-1 on defense for FaZe seems almost uncomebackable for Elevate, and indeed it was. They do get around here, but then FaZe just closes it out with two attacks. Final round being clutched out by Souls in a 1v1. And then when we go to Cafe, a little bit closer affair, two for Elevate, two for FaZe, one more for FaZe, one more for Elevate, 3-3 three, three half. Elevate phase, phase, elevate 5-5, five, five. and then phase and phase with a bunch of rehosts in here, but still. 7-5 for phase. They won by round timer here. They won in like a 2v4 or something because of Echo, so they, they played it pretty well. They had two Echo drones still alive. The planter was planting, and then he either got blasted by the Echo or he just saw it and he shoots it, and then the other one blasts him, falls down, uh, waits for like a second, and then hops up and then blasts him again at 0-0, zero, zero, and... Base clan wins the round. It looked like it was going to go to overtime, but no, they just could not manage to clear those those yokais. And yeah, FaZe get it done as was anticipated. Onigiri on top for his team once again, not getting nearly as many frags in this series, but still on top. And then Narex up here as well. Everyone else suffering in the stats department. Cyber, Souls popping off, Bullet, Astro doing fine as well, and then Cameraman only lacking behind, lagging behind just a little bit, nothing crazy. So that's all the matches, so we'll take a look at the bracket and talk about a few things, and then I suppose we'll look at player stats, call it a day. Alright, these are the eight matches that we just talked about, so I guess we'll recap quickly. In the group stage, we saw eliminated BDS, Cyclops, Sandbox, and Team 1 putting those teams at 17th through 20th place, and then in 13th through 16th place, going out in the first round of bracket, Eminem, 
Ninjas in Pajamas, Navi, and Rogue. And then the final teams that we've seen eliminated thus far, going out in 9th through 12th place, Damwon, Space Station, Furia, and Elevate. So we now have our top eight. Team Liquid versus TSM, Team Empire versus Sonics, Oxygen versus MIBR, and Dark Zero versus FaZe Clan. So I guess I'll quickly do predictions, right? I predicted some of these, but not all of them. So Liquid versus TSM, I did predict. I went with Liquid. At that point, I hadn't seen TSM look as dominant in bracket as they have looked, but uh, Liquid didn't look any less solid in their FaZe Clan matchup here than they had in the past. So I went with Liquid, and I mean... I'm going to have to stick with it. They're looking quite good. Empire vs. Sonics, I did predict on this matchup, but they were playing in the loser bracket in my in my bracket prediction. So I'll still stick with what I said. I said Sonics, and maybe I'd be, I'm even more happy with that prediction now. Hard to call, though. Sonics did beat Damwon, which was a surprise, but Empire beat Space Station uh, fairly easily. Not super easily. It was a little bit close, but uh, clean 2-0. So Empire looking pretty good as well. I'll still go with Sonics. I'll stay NA hopeful. And then in the loser's bracket, Oxygen versus MIBR. I had MIBR going out earlier, so I didn't predict this one at all. Um, I'm not sure who's going to take this one. MIBR did just take down an NA team in Space Station. Oxygen lost to, has only lost to a Latam team in bracket. That is FaZe Clan. They beat a European team and they beat an APAC team. I don't know that the region thing necessarily matters, but uh, I mean, considering they beat Damwon here, and maybe part of the reason they were able to beat them is because they were in the group. Maybe they were finally able to adapt to them after having already played them, but MIBR was also in that group, and so Auction did play MIBR as well, and if I remember right, that game ended up going to MIBR. So who do I predict here? Do I go with the team that won before? Uh, that's not necessarily always the thing to go on you, i mean we just saw it in the oxygen dam one um this was it was fairly close uh for the first two maps and then auction ran away with it and my vr beat ninjas not super decisively but fairly decisively and then it was super close against space station uh i'm gonna go with oxygen here i guess once again to remain na hopeful but i've liked oxygen's play in the loser bracket thus far a little bit more than mibr they did have this i mean not yeah, this kind of embarrassing series against FaZe, but they seem better since then. Since then, uh, Maybe MIBR is going to ruin my prediction once again, but I'll go with Oxygen here. And then finally, Dark Zero versus FaZe. Do I keep voting for NA? And I guess I didn't vote for uh, NA up here, but do I make it 3 out of 4 for NA? Probably not. Uh, FaZe still look pretty solid, taking this 2-0 over over elevate here and they also had this pretty decisive win here only losing to seeming tournament favorites still liquid at that point uh so i'll go with phase they look st they look pretty strong still and haven't been beaten by anyone except for liquid and then just j barely space station but uh really really just barely so even though dark zero looked pretty good i guess i'll go with phase i feel not confident in these two these really could go either way just like Every game in the lower bracket seems like it could have gone either way. Only a couple only a couple went decisively in the favor of the team that seemed like it was going to win. And I guess that was only like Oxygen. This, uh, you know, MIBR won pretty decisively over Ninjas, but everyone thought Nip was going to win. This was close. This was close. 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 Uh, surprise based on the prior appearances. And then I guess this one wasn't a surprise either. So six out of eight close or surprising matchups. And yeah, I guess that does it for the bracket. We're really slowing down here, and that's kind of a boon for me. It's been a bit daunting having to, uh, you know, absorb all of these games and then talk about all the games. We're going down to only four now. We had, of course, two streams running, and they each had four games, and now we're going down to just one stream with four games. So the day will be just as long, but there won't be two streams running. So we'll see. We'll see the matches in this order, I believe. And all right, we'll take a look at player stats and then we'll call it quits for the day. All right, player stats, leaderboards. We didn't see Sonics or Liquid play today, so their players really didn't have an opportunity to go down any lower. They could have, in theory, been passed, but that would have required a pretty spectacular performance. Uh, Merc also remains on top in Nesk. TSM not playing as well. NJR is slowly climbing up with uh, solid performances today. He passed Palu in terms of KD. He's fourth place on rating. 
uh, Merc down here. Pamazu on the climb as well. I'm not sure if he was on here before. I don't think he was. And then entry, Pamazu was here on entry. He might have even been third place, but it was a little bit wider of a gap. He's just one away from catching up to Merc and Nesk. We see Fultz on here, eliminated from the tournament. This is where he will end up. Maybe not on the leaderboard, but at plus 15. And Grixer close to falling off here, but remains on. Nesk, Palu, Grixer always also didn't play today. Neither did Bree Day. He already got eliminated, so nothing crazy here. And then Clutches, Woogie Man remains on top. And maybe he'll end up on top. He is out of the tournament, so he won't be getting any more. But uh, Prano is also out. Won't be able to catch him. Rampy out. Won't be able to catch him. Eclipse and Kanzen next closest. And maybe we'll... I guess we'll just check really quickly. Is there anyone else um, that has five clutches? No, it doesn't look like it. So we're going to have to see multiple clutches come out by anyone else to match Woogie Man for the tournament. Skies could end on the most plans for the tournament, but there are several games left to be played in which players could pass him. Clips needs seven, Super needs eight, Clips is in the loser bracket, Super is in the upper bracket, so maybe even, maybe Super will end up on top, uh, Coded sure won't, um, and Geo is the next closest. That could potentially make his way up there, but you know, getting 11 more when you only got 18 at this point seems quite difficult, and then we'll look at the full stats here, go in terms of rating, Grixer, Nesk, Paolo, and JR, Merc, nothing new. Uh, Alamau and Bride are both out, both were the best performing players for their team. We see Pambazoo just behind them, Woogie Man out, and just going down the line. I guess, let's see, did, um, did Rips end up on the bottom for, well, no, he didn't end up on the very bottom. He had alright games today, and his rating went up some amount, he passed Gatorada, but he does end up probably secured here at bottom four. It's probably unlikely that anyone else is gonna end up lower than, than him. Everyone down here is eliminated all the way up to, I guess, Super is now the lowest rated player still in the tournament. Julio out, 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 and then Geo the next, uh, Bosco's at, wow, just, and then Cameraman's next, just uh, not even terribly interesting, but a little bit. Yeah, all of the players, the top, uh, or rather bottom, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, bottom 12 players in terms of rating are out and i mean that makes sense you're probably not getting good stats if you are losing at matches and thus being eliminated and again we'll save the map stats maybe i'll go over them again tomorrow so that pretty well does it this is probably about as long as the other videos if not longer but probably about the same and yeah so looking forward to not having to watch multiple matches simultaneously tomorrow it is going to be probably a little bit annoying because whenever there was something not going on in on one stream, I would go to the other stream. There usually was something going on, which was nice, but now it's, I'm just going to have to deal with there being downtime if there's downtime. And we're coming down to the wire here. Can NA take it? TSM and Sonics seem like the teams in best position from NA to do so, with them being remaining in the upper bracket. Empire continues to look scary, not really ever faltering and looking scary, even though they faltered some amount on some maps, some matches. But then we also have Liquid who have not faltered one bit and look nearly indomitable. Will TSM be the first to prove them dominable? We'll have to find out. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next video.